Hey everyone, it's Christian, your Vancouver Realtor. And the topic of today's video is, a real estate concert of immigration is fueling BC's real estate growth. No big surprise here, uh, as we know, but there was an interesting meeting that took place about a month ago at the Vancouver Real Estate Forum, and they have these every couple, of, twice a year. And at this meeting, they had some of the big shots, heavyweights, from some of the big banks come in and talk about their predictions and projections for real estate in Vancouver and the province. Now, one of the big heavyweights they brought in was a guy named Benjamin Tall. He's a CIBC chief economist. And like many of these experts, he's, he's, got, he's full of uh, predictions. So he had a very interesting one here, uh, which is that he believes that the prices in the lower mainland will continue to rise, especially in the next several years, because of increased immigration patterns, right? And he specifically cited 60 to 70,000 Hong Kongers who have Canadian passports, who he thinks are gonna move back into the lower mainland. It's, a, it's a, an interesting prediction. I personally think that number is high. Uh, I've been doing some digging, doing some reading, and I don't think you're going to see that many 70,000 people move back that fast in the next two to three years uh, because that it would be about 20%. Now, they say there's about 300,000 Canadian passport holders in Hong Kong. And you can imagine if they all moved back, they can't right now because the border's closed because of the coronavirus. But you can imagine if all these people move back into, the, into, the, into Canada, and many of them came back to BC, that would put incredible pressure on real estate prices with that kind of population growth. Remember, these are not foreigners, these are Canadians. Canadian, they have Canadian passports just like you and I. They just happen to be living and working in Hong Kong. And you can imagine if they moved all, they all moved back once the borders opened, that you know prices would continue to jump because there wouldn't be enough homes for everybody. Now, why would they want to move back? Well, you know, if you've been following the news for the last couple of years, you've probably noticed that things have changed in Hong Kong. It, the city used to be sort of a city-state. It had its own autonomy, and that's really been taken away now, that it's kind of been subsumed or um, absorbed by, the, by China. And, of course, there have been some... You've, if you're following in the news, you've seen a lot of pro-democracy activists, even some very well-known figures like Jimmy Lai, uh, and Martin Lee, I think the father of the, uh, the 1997 act, uh, who have been actually arrested and are in jail. So it doesn't look good for, for them and a lot of the pro-rights activists. But, so what does that mean for us here? I don't, I still, with all that going on, I don't think we're gonna see a, a sea of Hong Kongers moving back here. I'll give you an example. I, I went to university with a, a, a friend of mine. He's living there. He's working now. I think he's an importer, exporter of, of medical supplies. He's married. He's got a couple of kids there. He's comfortable, you know, and I think folks are going to generally focus on the economics first, meaning their job, their income, providing for the family. And that's going to be the focus. I think what you will see and could see over time is a lot of people leaving Hong Kong, especially sending their kids to schools in Canada or the United States or maybe the UK or Australia. That, and then maybe the kids don't go back, but that's a slow generational kind of change. So I think this prediction here that we're gonna see 70,000 people coming over from Hong Kong um, in the next couple of years, I think that's a bit high. I could be wrong, and let's we'll, we'll find out. But I don't think it's going to be that extreme right away. And, and also, just from what I've been reading online from immigration consultants in Hong Kong, they do report increased inquiries to move to Canada, but nothing that suggests that they're going to be flooded like this. A couple of other predictions that came out of this Vancouver Real Estate Forum 
One was by one of the, the leads at one of the big developers here locally, and he says that 2023 will be a rock concert of immigration. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to really mess up housing affordability, end quote. And that came from a, a gentleman named Eric Carlson. I think he's right about this. And he's, I believe he's right about this because if you look at the number of immigrants we let into Canada on a yearly basis, it's about 300,000 prior to the coronavirus. After, it's going to be 400,000. That's what the Trudeau Liberals want. And so those are the projections for the next three years is, is 400, I think it's 410 and 420. Okay, that's a lot of people. Of uh, those numbers, how many are going to come to BC? That's what we want to know, right? How many more people are moving here? And are we building enough homes for all these people? And if we're not, again, expect prices, uh, expect pressure on prices upward. Expect pressure on rents to increase, right? If there's not enough homes for everybody, it's just simple supply and demand. 400,000 uh, immigrants. Prior to the coronavirus, we had about 70,000. I think in 2019, to, we had 70,000 newcomers into the British Columbia. Of those, about 40,000 came into the Lower Mainland, right? And we can probably expect to see something similar and more as we go forward. So you probably expect maybe up to 50,000 people a year moving to the Lower Mainland. So. Where are they all gonna live? That's the next question. From my research, what I can tell is that we're building about 25,000 to 30,000 new housing starts, new units, houses, detached homes, all in townhomes, all of that together. So it's simple economics, right? If you have 50,000 people moving into the region and you're only building about 30,000 homes every year, that's gonna put more pressure on prices. Now, we haven't seen that in this corona year, right? In the last 15 months especially, you haven't seen that because the borders have been closed. So you actually saw what you, what you would expect. You saw the rents go down. This is, this is, a, this is what we would, would, would assume. Now, however, it'll probably be the opposite once the borders get opened. Now, that may take some time. It will probably be into sort of mid-2022 when you start to see a lot more people moving into the province. Um, just anecdotally, I've had a number of clients uh, who've, who've moved to Canada, and a lot of them tend to be high, what they call high-skilled, right? You know, tech workers, many of them from India. A lot of them seem to be working at Amazon. <laughs> so uh, that kind of trend is probably going to continue, right? And if you look at the government of Canada, typically they want about half to two thirds to be high skilled immigrants. And that, you know, because we have an aging population and we need to support uh, the country with fresh blood, that's what we do. We import people in Canada. Uh, and that's one of the differences too. When you're ever looking at real estate from, you know, comparing Canada and com to let's say in places like uh, Asia, like Japan and South Korea, or even China, we import people we have immigration in those countries they don't right it's it's just the way it is and and so you can look at places like in japan where they had real estate prices for a long time were the same for many many years although tokyo has has since gone up in the last several years but uh that's the difference uh we don't have that here we we allow everybody to come in pretty much right so those are just a few thoughts I would say that yes, in the next several years and going out the next decade, you're going to see our population grow. BC has now 5 million people and it's going to keep growing. And as long as people keep coming here and we can't build homes fast enough because maybe there's too much bureaucracy, red tape at the different city halls, what will happen is we'll see increasing pressure on prices. So affordability will likely not get any better. It'll probably get even harder. If you got any questions, comments, leave those below. We'd love to have you subscribe and, and join the family.
and we'll see you next time.